Grace Lutheran Church and School. We're glad you're joining us for our Wednesday evening worship here on July 15, 2020. Uh, our liturgy this evening is a compline. It's a prayer at the close of the day. I think you'll, you'll enjoy. It's a beautiful liturgy. As always, we make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin with the opening versicles. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning. Your truth and the close of the day. Dear friends, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy and gracious God. I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me, and I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ. In him we are forgiven. We rest now in his peace, and we rise in the morning to serve him. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 65. We read responsively. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges. 
softening of the showers and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. Shout and sing together for joy. Our musical selection. Epistle for Sunday, uh, last from Romans 8, beginning at the 12th verse, Paul writes, So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we're Romans 8, uh, verses 7, 12 through 17. Flesh or spirit, child of God and heir with Christ. Paul starts there with, we're debtors to God. Luther would prefer saying, we're beggars because we bring nothing to our redemption. But we're debtors to God because he raised Jesus from the dead. We're debtors to Jesus because he redeemed us and justified us. And we're debtors to the Holy Spirit because he created faith and made us a child of God. Paul there is going back and forth between life and death, and it made me think of a philosophical life and death discussion that you may have seen and maybe not thought about, dealing with the Clint Eastwood movie, the outlaw Josie Wales, and there, he has a life-and-death discussion with Ten Bears, the chief. 
And Ten Bear says to uh, Josie Wales, I've heard you're the gray rider. You would not make peace with the blue coats. You may go in peace. Like every relationship, Ten Bears and the outlaw start with some common standing. Of course, Josie says he doesn't have anywhere to go, and Ten Bears, then you'll die. Josie says, well, I did come here to die with you or to live with you. The same conversation that Paul has. And so he says, I've come to give you either one or get either one from you. I came here like this so you'll know my word of death is true and my word of life is then true. The sign of the Comanche, again, this common understanding for a relationship, will be on our lodge. That is the word of life. Ten bears ask, and your word of death? It's in my pistols and in your rifles. I'm here for either one. Ten bears says, well, these things we already have. Josie, well, that's true. I'm not promising you anything extra. I'm just giving you life. So in that discussion, Josie and Ten Bears decide to reject death for life, and they seal it by a blood covenant. They actually use a knife, and they clasp hands. They don't exchange any goods. Their peace is a matter of words, trusted words, and signs of those words. Their peace is life with one another, and they choose life over death. And that's what Paul's talking about in this text. He says, if we choose to live by the flesh, we die, but if we do not reject the Holy Spirit, we live. And if we live that's a battle that we will engage the rest of our life between the flesh and the Spirit. And the warning to those who choose the flesh are warned by Paul, you're about to die and be forever separated from God. But for us, our baptism ends that domination of sin because we die to sin in death in baptism. We're joined to the death and resurrection of Christ in our baptism. And so we'll struggle the rest of our life in conformity, trying to conform with the law where our flesh will be against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. After that struggle of Paul describes there, he moves on to five gospel assurances. His first one is, if we're led by the Spirit, we're a son or a daughter of God. This idea of being led by the Spirit is reminiscent of Jesus being led by the Spirit after his baptism into the wilderness. In our baptism, the Holy Spirit puts to death the works of the flesh and creates in us a new identity. That's why we're called a child of God. And so if we're a child of God, we're a son or a daughter. And if we're a son or a daughter, we are an heir, an inheritor of the promises of God. Second assurance that Paul gives, you receive that spirit of adoption. The Holy Spirit, the giver of gifts in Christ. And the reception of the Holy Spirit in baptism is the beginning of new life. Paul speaks clearly about that in Romans 6. He says, all those baptized into Christ died to sin and have risen with him to new life. And elsewhere, he attributes that new life, that spirit of adoption to our baptism. It's God who acts in baptism. It's God, the creator, who changes our status from slave and makes us his son or daughter. And as an heir, we have all the benefits and privileges of a child of God. 
And that transformation will be complete when our Lord comes again and we receive our resurrected bodies. For now, our mortal bodies remain dead on account of sin, something that's totally been amplified by the pandemic and the coronavirus. Third assurance of the gospel. Two words, Abba, Father. These words are the same words that Jesus spoke in the Garden of Gethsemane in the Gospel of Luke. But they imply, not only imply, they mean that we have an intimate relationship as a child and daughter of God. And because we have that inheritance that we share with Jesus. Luther says that this cry of the Holy Spirit exceeds and breaks through the powerful and the horrible cries of the law of sin and death and the devil. He says it penetrates the clouds and heaven and reaches all the way to the ears of God. Fourth assurance, the Spirit testifies with our spirit. It's another confirmation that we're a child of God. It's a personal witness of God that we are his child and why we must treasure our baptism. And that combination of our spirit with the Holy Spirit satisfies Scripture's requirement for two witnesses found in Deuteronomy 19.15 for matters of life and death. So the Holy Spirit not only makes me a child of God, he makes me aware of it. Our formula of Concord says it this way, we should diligently seek to confirm our call and election so that the more we experience the power and the might of the Holy Spirit, the less we doubt our election. For the Spirit testifies that we are a child of God. So Paul closes, if a child of God, then heirs of God with Christ. God chose Israel solely by grace and love. That promise is rooted in the promise of God to Abraham. And that inheritance of Abraham came not through the law, but through faith in the gospel. That same inheritance is ours by faith in the offspring and seed of Abraham. Jesus Christ. And so our baptism and reception of the Holy Spirit of adoption secure again our status as a child of God. And if we're a child of God, we're a brother and a sister of Christ. And if a brother and sister of Christ, suffering may come our way. But Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, Momentary afflictions prepare us for the eternal weight of glory beyond all other comparisons. So this evening, Paul has moved past sin and slavery and the law. And he's now focusing us on the life that's ours through Christ. Jesus is our fellow heir and we may suffer with him. And the Holy Spirit witnesses with our spirit that we're a child of God. And that's the best news we can have. That's the good news of our past, our present, and our future. Amen. We continue with the responsory of the church. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Into Father and to the Son 
and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Mm. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Dear friends, please pray with me. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night so that we who are wearied by the changes and the chances of life may find our rest in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal God, the hours both of day and night are yours, and to you the darkness is no threat. Be present, we pray, with those who labor in these hours of night, especially those who watch and work on behalf of others. Grant them diligence in their watching, faithfulness in their service, courage in danger and competence in emergencies. Help them to meet the needs of others with confidence and compassion through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Abide with us, Lord, for it is toward evening. The day is far spent. Abide with us and with your whole church. Abide with us at the end of day, at the end of our life, at the end of the world. Abide with us with your grace and your goodness, with your holy word and sacrament, with your strength and blessing. Abide with us when the night of affliction and temptation comes upon us, the night of fear and despair, that night when death draws near. Abide with us and all the faithful now and forever. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Nunc Dominus. Guide us, waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace.
almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you. Amen. Now before our dismissal, again, we just are glad you're here and worshiping with us. Uh, invite you back this coming Sunday. Again, here we're live streaming service at 9.30 for worship here at Grace Lutheran Church. I hope this week is good to you and that you're a blessing. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.